Hi students. Okay, so we're back with our tray. Our tray has been out in the sun for a little bit and now it has reached the leather hard stage, which means that it's no longer flexible, it's no longer plastic, but it's still cold and it's still imparting moisture. It's just stiff and feels a lot like a leather shoe, but I can still carve into it really easily. This is the great stage for when we want to add handles, carve into our pieces, put the slip on, peel the slip away, or carve through the slip. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how I would put handles on this form and paint the slip onto it. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a little moment here to soften the cut edges of the tray that I made and make sure that everything's blended and has nice craftsmanship. So I'm doing that, and this looks pretty good. So before I put handles on the top of it, and I'll show you how I made these little loop handles, I want to flip it over and place the feet on. If I put the handles on first, they'll crack off when I flip this over. So I'm gonna take my tray, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna make sure that the bottom is nice and smooth as well, that it doesn't have any clay, little lumps, bumps, or ridges on it, and then it looks nice and clean. And then I can decide what kind of foot I wanna put on the bottom of this. I can put a coil all the way around to lift it up. I can put little feet on the bottom on the corners to help lift it up as well. And I think that's what I'll do. When we talk about the foot of a ceramic piece, we're talking about the bottom and any piece on any part of the bottom that helps lift your pot up or that um, is the bottom of your piece. We call it a foot in ceramics. So I have a tray here that I applied feet to by using small pieces of coils and I put them on the four corners of my form to create a lifted foot on the bottom of this piece so that when it flips over, it's resting on a raised foot. And this piece has handles, this tray. So to create a foot, I can take a soft piece of clay and I can gently roll my clay out into a thin little coil. Sometimes I'll add a little water to this. And I just roll this out with the tips of my fingers, creating a long sort of worm shape, okay? And this is about the thickness of my middle, my pinky finger here. So I'm gonna make two of these so I have enough to wrap around the base of the entire form. And I use them, use the previous one as a size measurement for the other one. Okay, so I have some foot coils here. I'm gonna pull my tray back towards me and I'm gonna use my serrated rib. This is the one with the little teeth. And I'm going to scratch into the bottom of my form, slightly inside the area where it starts to curve in. I'm scoring really deeply. I want to make sure that there's lots of little clay boogers on the bottom of this and lots of deep shadows. Then I also come in and give it a little scratch with my needle tool as well. So I'm going to add a little moisture and see the water kind of flood into the grooves of my tray here. And then I can also use my joining slip to impart a little bit of slippy slurry to the bottom of this form. Don't be afraid of this. Use it and use it a lot of it because it really helps your clay stick down. Now I'm gonna take the first coil 
and I'm going to scratch it really carefully and deeply and make a groove. And now I'm gonna take this coil and place it onto my tray here. And as I go, I'm following the path that I made with my trimming tool and I'm aligning it, or sorry, my scoring tool, and I'm aligning it really nicely and following the form of the tray. I'm pressing down, I'm kind of wiggling and jiggling and make sure that it's attached. Now, this coil isn't gonna go all the way around. That's why I have an extra one here. So I'm gonna cut this one at an angle, cut this one slightly at an angle. I'm gonna take my second little foot coil here. I'm gonna score this, and I'm gonna cut this one at the corresponding angle. Score a little bit here on the end of this coil add a little moisture, and then attach it right to the end where I left off. And I'll bring this around and where it meets up on this side, I'll cut that, score, score, and squeeze those two together and attach them. Now, this is a good time for me to make sure that my coil is attached really well. I run my fingers over it. I use a little water so my fingers can slide over the form. And now I'm gonna take my sponge and wipe it over the attachment so I know that it's sealed down really well. Some artists like to take their wooden tool and run a line along the bottom to make sure that their coil is sealed completely to their tray. I wanna make sure that the craftsmanship is good, that it's cleaned up, and it's nice and smooth. Okay. Before I flip this over, I'm gonna go ahead and put my name into it. Nikki Lewis, just so I don't forget. Now, this is a little soft. Normally I would let this dry a little bit so it doesn't get squished, but for the sake of the demo, I'm gonna flip it over and now you can see that my tray is raised up and it's lifted. So if I wanna put handles on my tray, which is optional, I can do that. I could play around with making ropes, I can put flowers, I can do leap, uh, loops, leaves, anything like that. So for this, just to make a basic handle, I take a little piece of clay and I roll it into a coil. And I'm gonna make this a nice fat coil here. Flatten it out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna bend this into a rainbow shape. Whenever you make handles, don't make a handle and then stick it on your form. Make two handles so they match and they're ready to go. So I have a handle and I made these two earlier. They're matching. They match up in size and in length, but I don't like the way that the ends look because they're just the rough ends of the coils. So I'm gonna take my needle tool here I'm gonna cut little wedges out of the side so it looks clean and it has a cool design. I'm gonna do that for the other one as well. So that way they're matching and corresponding with each other. I'm gonna move my tray forward 
And I'm gonna take my handles and position them and take a look at them and see if I like the way they look on my form. Do I want them on the sides? Do I want them on the short part of the form? Or do I want them kind of coming off the corners? This is an artistic choice that you get to make. But for right now, I'm just gonna put them on the ends because I think that that's gonna look best. So in order to do that, I'm going to mark my form where I know my handles are gonna go. And I'm gonna score this really well, deep scoring, lots of dark shadows. And then I'm gonna take the handle and I'm gonna score the back side of it. Take some of my joining slip and attach this. And now I'm gonna take the handles, the first handle, and really press it down into the form. Make sure it's nice and straight. Really wiggle and jiggle and attach this well. I could take my sponge, just like I did with the foot ring on the bottom clean it, wipe it so the attachment is sealed down and the craftsmanship is nice. And then I'll flip this around. I'll mark the placement of the next handle and do the same. Where I score really well, I score deeply I score the handle again, right where it's gonna be attached to the tray. Not afraid to score really well. More joining slip. Take the handle, press down again, attach it firmly. Everything is in the leather hard stage. And once I get that attached, I'll take my damp sponge and clean up that attachment. I'll check the underside as well. And now I have a beautiful tray with attached handles and it's ready for slip decorating. Okay, students, so I'm gonna show you how to apply paper stencils to your tray. I have cut out a bunch of little leaf shapes out of a regular piece of paper. Please use regular paper or computer paper. Don't use newspaper, it doesn't work so well. So I've cut out all these leaf shapes and to apply them like I have here, I take the paper stencil, I dip it into water so it's very wet, and then I slide it onto the form and position it sort of like a temporary tattoo that you would stick on your arm. And I take these paper stencils and I apply them to my tray and I really just push down and make sure that I don't have any water leaking um, out from underneath the piece or floating. I make sure that I sponge the stencil down really firmly so the paper stencil doesn't float above the water, float on the water. So I can stick my stencil down and I also am really careful to make sure that I don't have any little air pockets that have trapped themselves underneath the stencil that they're sealed down to the clay really nicely. You want to cover your whole piece in paper stencils. You wanna make sure that it has a lot of um, design on the piece because it's more interesting that way when you can peel the paper away and that you have a lot of exciting pattern on your piece. I'm just gonna put these couple few down just for more visual interest that I've dipped in water here. 
and normally I would cover this whole tray in stencils. But for the sake of the demo, you're gonna take a little bit of your slip and using your soft brush and even your sumi brush that came in your toolkit, you're gonna dip your sumi brush in water. You're gonna blot out all the extra water. You just want your brush hydrated. And then you're gonna run it through the slit and you're going to paint over your paper stencils. You wanna start in the middle of the stencil and kind of work out to the edges because you don't wanna accidentally lift your stencil up. So I do this really carefully and I go over each stencil taking care to not slide my stencil around or accidentally move it. Once you get a good coat of the slip over your stencils, then you could come back in and coat the whole surface of your tray and color it up. So once I do this and I get a nice coating of slip, colored slip over the surface of my piece, I will wait for this to dry and then peel the paper stencil away to reveal the image of the stencil underneath. And we'll do that in the next video.